Welcome to Bible Nova Brews. Deep thoughts fermented over time and text. We're here with Doug Overmeyer tonight. How you doing, Doug? Hello. How's it going, guys? <laughs> going great. Awesome. We got Gumby. Hey, what's up? Hola. And myself. So we're a little shy tonight. Uh, unfortunately, events came up which uh, prevented the rest of the crew from coming. So, but it'll still be a blast, I'm sure. Yep. Yes, it will. <laughs> still going to drink. <laughs> We'll be starting out tonight with the Heavy Seas Tropicannon. Our brand new citrus IPA is exploding with bright citrus aroma and flavor, creating an exciting new variation on our flagship loose cannon. Tropicannon clocks in at the same 7.25 ABV as its cousin, but packs a full blast of orange, grapefruit, mango, and lemon flavor. We've downplayed some of Loose Cannon's pininess and amped up the citrus by swapping Centennial and Palisade hops for Amarillo and even more Simcoe. We've introduced dried grapefruit, orange, and lemon peel in the brewing process and added mango, blood orange, and more grapefruit post-fermentation. Nice. Love the way you read, Aaron. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for Sean Connery, but no Sean Connery, Katie. <laughs> not, not as yet. <laughs> this... Lately, I, is honestly my favorite IPA. Um, for our listeners out there, we are expanding our palate. We will still make sure we are featuring an Ohio brew in every show. But our listenership is also exploding. And so to accommodate more of our listeners, we are going to be trying different brews from around the country, yes. potentially around the world. And we love to accommodate. <laughs> <laughs> We're so accommodating. Um, this is actually very orangey. I mean, this is this is almost a uh, an orange soda type yeah, color. It looks like a bourbon. Oh, smell that! <laughs> smell that. <laughs> it's really good. This is more citrus than you may be able to handle. Cheers! Cheers! Mm. Again, that robust flavor. I like it. I like it, Aaron. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's right off the get-go. You can definitely taste the the full palate. I mean, it's the blood orange part is my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it right off off the rip, it's right there. What I worry about with these citrusy type beers is that they're not going to be full body enough. But this one has body. Yeah. No, but that's so good. I mean, the smell gets you. It it, it smacks you right in the face. Oh yeah. It, like you're like you're walking through. A citrus grove. Yeah. Believe it or not, it's hard to find this one in Ohio. I finally found a place hmm. pretty close by that's selling this now. But before, the only guaranteed place that always had it was Melt. Ah, okay. Which has great food, by the way. Yes. <laughs> Doug, do you drink beer? Uh, yeah. In fact, I have a, a little winter lager right here. A little bit of Sam Adams, right? So. Ah, all right. Ooh, nice. left over from the from the holidays, you know. I don't drink a ton of beer. I've uh, more into mixed drinks, but okay, you know, when Rome, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> do as the Romans do. <laughs> the, uh, um, I've been going through your book. I've actually been really enjoying your book. Um, it's I think it's well written and it's earnest. Uh, it comes right from the heart. <laughs> you can tell. Um. Yeah, thank you. And the real life experiences in there are are fairly mind blowing. When I was going through it, because um, your personal testimony about uh, cleaning cleaning out your house was, I thought, awesome. Yeah, it's it was a new experience for us at the time, and uh, we, um, you know. <laughs> A lot of people have supernatural experiences and they don't really have a grid to think about it. And I mean, I, we've, my wife and I, uh, we've been Christians, you know, basically all of our lives raised in the church. And, uh, but when our, our daughter was seeing things in the house that we couldn't see, we didn't really know what to do with that. And, uh, we happened to be in a small group at the time at a new church and, uh, at this, it was just so funny. Um, we didn't know these people. Um, we'd never been in a small group. It, it, it's a big church, but they want people to be in small groups, you know, where you can uh, actually uh, interact with people and get to know people. 
and uh, and then go deeper than you can on a Sunday morning, right? And so they were going around the room um, to say, well, what did you do this weekend? And someone said, well, we, we went to a house cleansing. And I'm thinking, I mean, these people are weird. Or they, went, they, <laughs> they, they go to people's houses and they clean it or what? No, no, there was some, uh, like in The Exorcist, uh, nothing quite so dramatic spinning. But so we're like, what does that mean? What does it mean with, with just, these are regular people. You train to do this? Like, no, man, we're all empowered. We all have the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and the gospel is really powerful. And like, oh. So we were sharing our, our story, and uh, so the people came over to our house uh, one day and went from room to room, just sort of took authority over it, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was neat. It, it was neat, and it sort of launched us into exploring more about what it meant to live a supernatural lifestyle uh, here in the States in the 21st century. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, there was uh, – I, I kind of went through, and I, I picked little uh, – little, uh, verses or uh, or paragraphs out of different parts of the book uh found really interesting uh yeah like what like well, well like instance. like one was the the story of the uh of the lamp yes okay right so what happened I mean, it's just it's just weird okay it's weird and that's okay uh <laughs> there was one so what they did is what when we do a house cleansing a lot of what you need to, as Christians, you need to know who, and then just walk from that. But the, this group of Christians went into a room and they just asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, is there anything unclean in this room? Any, are there any dark spirits in here or anything off? You know, just kind of lead the way. And, you know, there wasn't speaking in tongues or wasn't holy water. I mean, you can, you can do those things. It was just very, you know, no yelling, mm. you know, asking and very conversational. And it acted like the Lord was right there in the room with them. And, because he is right, right? and and then they just kind of waited and they, they wait for impressions um th- th- people will get impressions in their mind or they get feelings in their body Some, uh, sometimes it's it's not the lord so you learn to discern over time you learn to start it's this lord but somebody uh, said this is gonna sound kind of weird but there's this ceramic lamp in the living room there and it's something off about that lamp it's weird it's a weird lamp something weird about it it's dark i don't know i don't know that makes sense to me and so the home Homeowner said, "Well, I, you know, I bought that lamp, and uh, it doesn't mean anything to me. We can get rid of it if, if you think I should get rid of it." And so, uh, so they took the lamp out. She actually took the lamp outside and smashed it in the sidewalk. Hmm. And inside the lamp was a little idol. Wow! I like put an idol in it and then sealed it up, right, with ceramic or something, and or, or clay. And uh, there was an idol in that thing, and that sucker was a. I would call it like a magnet to the demonic. Mm. And they, the woman didn't even know it was in the house. She was a Christian. She's not worshiping an idol, but somehow that sucker was attracting uh, demonic uh, forces in her house. And uh, they got rid of that thing out, and they did some, you know, did some prayer over the house. It was gone. The demonic stuff was gone. They threw it away. And so that kind of got me thinking: What do I have in my house that maybe needs to be declared for the kingdom? You know, maybe we had something that was, that was, uh, you know, and in the New Testament, in, in the book of Acts, uh, when a bunch of people in Ephesus uh, turned from, from their occult religions, from their pagan religions, they actually burned all their books and idols and things. They, they actually took out just all their paraphernalia that they had from their old religions, and they actually burned it. And it, it was, I don't remember what it, it was quite, it was millions of dollars worth of stuff in modern, modern terms. And hmm. so, you know, they cleansed their house. And in the, in the Old Testament, um, when uh, Israel was going into, and God said, look, don't bring any detest, keep your home. You are holy ground. Your home should be holy ground. Keep it holy. And so, you know, I, <clears throat> I, one of the things I learned in our own life is uh, we had, uh, had some movies that were not, they were not good. I mean, they weren't. They weren't. They weren't porn, but they were. But they were R-rated. Uh, they showed lots of violence and stuff. And I'm not saying this is as a law. This isn't for everybody. But the God spoke to me and said, "You need to stop watching violence to people. Um, they are my image. I, you know, if you why are you watching? I like sci-fi or zombie movies, right? And so I like watching the monsters tear people up and eat them and blood splatter <laughs> in the camera and all that. And uh, you know, over time, time I tell the story in the book. I think, but. God spoke to my heart and said, you need to stop watching that. In fact, get it out of your house. Mm. And like the Kill Bill 
movies. You ever seen the Kill Bill movies? Oh, yeah. Fantastic movies. Great very movie. bloody. Yeah. Lots of people get killed in those movies. And God just said, no, you need, to, you need to get that out of your house. Because when I would watch those movies, my daughter would have a nightmare. Oh. And she wasn't watching the movies. She'd be in bed. Right. I would watch them. I'd gorge on the, on the wow. violence and the blood and stuff. But then she'd have a nightmare. And, uh, and uh, I figured that out when I fasted those movies for three weeks. Those were a three-week period. The only time that she wouldn't have a nightmare. She's very sensitive to the spirit realm. Yeah. My yeah. daughter. And, you know, I, I, I can't, I, again, I can't make a law. That's not for everybody. Um, Brian Gadawa, you know, a friend of, of mine, he's been on your show. He loves horror movies. Doesn't do anything to his family. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, he thinks yeah. there, there's some Christian value in watching horror. Um, um, but in our family, it's, it just doesn't, doesn't work. So we, we avoid it. Yep. Okay. That kind of that kind of goes into the whole. Uh, that was my the next one I had brought up was doorways for the demonic. Was, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. You know, and then like people will write into my website, um, the CRC Ministry site, the CRC dot com, and they they say, well, you know, I, what's attracting these spirits to our house? Uh, sin. It, like it's not magic. It's like it's sin. And you have to discern what God is speaking to you. And uh, sometimes, and people want a law. They, they want, give me the rules of what I can follow to keep demons away. Like, well, no, it's not the law. It's the relationship, and God will speak to you. And for some people, it's sports. You know, they're mm. obsessed with sports, and they have to cut that off, and it, it becomes an idol in their mind. I can't exactly, it can be a doorway to the demonic. Some things are obvious, porn, right? And right. Um, just sin, uh, thinking about sin, I and mean, because Jesus goes farther than the Ten Commandments, he, he's like, no, don't. It's not that. It's not that you shouldn't just do sin. You don't even think about it. Don't even hold a place in your mind over it. Yeah. And the, the New Testament is full of, of, of Paul telling people, take, take your thoughts captive, right? And that's what you know, as men, and take what we think about, and we we need to make sure our minds are the minds of Christ and put that on. And it's a, it's a daily walk. It's a daily struggle. But it, it, as you go down this uh, a path of, of thinking about sin and sinning or, or just doing stuff that is not holy, you're going to open doorways to the demonic. I, I'm convinced that sin sends radar signals to the enemy. And perpetual sin, habitual sin, is a signal to the enemy, and it, it opens you up. It doesn't mean that every time people sin, a demon attacks. That's not what I'm saying, but it is open. It gives permission. It gives permission. And okay. little spiritual, I, I think sin, in the spirit realm, sin acts like little your spirit. And a, a demon can, like, fish, hook on to you and will just, like, hook. And so, you know, you want to, you the, the best way to be delivered from enemy spirits is to live holy lives, is to repent of your sin and live holy. Stop sinning. Be holy. It, it's <laughs> it's not rocket science, but you don't hear a lot about that in in church, you know, it's yeah. Like, oh, I'm free. I'm free from the law. Yeah, you're free from yourself. You know, you're free from sin. So stop sinning. So stop it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm I'm saved from hell, but I'm also saved to live a good life now. Yeah. I don't mean best life now. I but I mean freedom from the enemy. It doesn't mean bad things don't happen. But not every bad thing that happens is is demonic. It sometimes just chaos happens. Yeah. But no sense in inviting demonic forces too, you know, so just stop sinning. It, it kind of, <laughs> that kind of reminds me of, uh, of martial arts. I like a lot. I liken a lot of things to martial arts. So, yeah. <laughs> um, there's a, if you have a weakness open, that's the weakness you continue to attack. Um, mm. I actually had a fight years ago, um, in, uh, right. out in here in Cleveland and uh, my opponent had no defense for clinching. So every single time I got close to him, I clinch him and I knee him. And I'd knee him over and over and over and over again. And we'd break, you know, mm -hmm. we'd kick, we'd box. And as soon as we got close to him, I'd grab him, and I'd start kneeing again. He had no defense for it, so I just kept hammering away at it. It's kind of, kind of the same idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you think about, you know, the whole armor of Christ, and we like that analogy. And I've seen whole sermon messages talking about how part of it's a helmet. Part of, but if you look at what the actual things are, that's the whole armor. It's, it's faith. It's the gospel. It's truth. It's, you know, it's living the Christian life is what it is. Yeah, taking your thoughts captive uh, because the enemy will exploit that and he'll open it 
uh, you know, the enemy doesn't play fair. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants to hurt you. He wants to hurt you. He wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy your children. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, and I, it really was, I was really aware of that. Um, the enemy, I mean, I heard a pastor say, I don't know how true it is, but I pastor say the reason the enemy hates us so much because he likes to hurt God by hurting us. You know, he can't hurt God, but he can hurt his children. Like the mafia. You know? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, if you want to, if you want to really want to get me, go after my kids, you know, that nothing. Right. And so I pray every night over my children. I, I, I lay well, almost every night. I don't be overly literal over, we were traveling this weekend, so I didn't do it over the weekend, but you know, when I tuck my kids in, I like, I speak God's kingdom in your life, good dreams and good sleep in Jesus' name. I say that every night. I mean it. God's kingdom is God's rule. God's, God's rule. God's dynamic rule. And, and also good dreams and good sleep because, you know, nightmares can hit kids. Not all nightmares are from the enemy. Sometimes kids just have bad dreams. We just have, sometimes we just have bad dreams. Um, sometimes we have pizza before we go to bed and it gives us weird dreams, right? Yeah. But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, it, sometimes dreams are spiritual and they can come from the enemy. Yeah. And uh, so I just want to cut that that sucker off, you know. I find it interesting what you said, Doug, about um, how <coughs> how what may be perceived as sin for you might not be the same for you know, like for instance, Brian Godawa. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I I had a friend tell me one time in his own personal spiritual journey that what sin for him in one season might not be sin in another season of his life for him, mm. and I. I I didn't know how to agree with that at the time because I wasn't as developed, I don't think. I wasn't ready to hear that. I didn't quite understand that. But, you know, because what we may perceive as sin, like, you know, Brian, like Brian Godwin may, oh, no, I'm fine watching that. It, it doesn't affect me. Yeah. So how, how, do we, how do we do that across the board? You know, is it just everyone's own personal? Who, who defines that? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, that, and, that is. People want rules, and, and rules are helpful. I mean, some things are always sin. Adultery is always sin, right? Right, I mean, right, right. Some things are just obvious. But, but, but the gray issues, uh, like, you murder, know, like, because... Yeah. But, you know, like, murder, yeah, duh. But, you know, Jesus is like, <laughs> don't even think about. Don't gossip. Like, gossip? Oh, are you kidding me? You know, like... Yeah. But I'm not... Go- we, we don't gossip. We share, right? Right. <laughs> so, I... But when we're sharing... Good, that's good. It's like, am I... What am I... What's... What, what's my heart condition, you know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's about, it is really about relationship. And I think it's good to be in relationship. And you have to have friends who can speak truth. Like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Doug, I, 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 I see this in your life that is not good for you. And I love you. And, you probably should get some, bring some balance to this area in your life. I'm like, what the heck is what's that? That's not your business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's not your bit. What? What do you mean? I'm working too much, or I'm hanging out with with women from work too much, or mm. I'm maybe I'm drinking too much. I mean, what are you talking about? Yeah, I, I I'm not I'm not I'm not going anywhere. You know, and uh, and when you get that response, then you're like, oh, 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 hang on, maybe that maybe that got into my you know, hey, maybe there's something I need to evaluate and it's just so hard because you got to stay humble Mm -hmm. you know i think of colossians 3 i think about colossians 3 a lot where he says think about things above not things below and and think from god's perspective and you know we we go we go through seasons i like what you said about it may not be a sin and this time hey you need to cut this out for you need to cut this out uh it's getting you're out of balance yeah yeah, you know i right it is relationship and we have to it's cliche, but it's true. You get in the word, <laughs> you pray every day. And and God will highlight things to you if you listen. And and he, it's a conversation too, because I can I can sometimes I'll ask God, Lord, you know, I've had a I've had a drink every night this week. Is that too much? It, like am I am I numbing out to something at work? And God's like, No, actually you're fine. Oh, Sweet, you know, and for another <laughs> drink. but or like, no, yeah, you need to back off a little bit, you know. Can you go two weeks having a drink or something? Yeah, it's just an example, because God wants us to be free. He wants us to live, and God gave wine to make the heart merry, and that's a paraphrase of an Old Testament verse, one of the great best verses in the Bible. But there's balance too, 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, are you you know are you numbing out? And that's the thing. What I was doing with those horror movies, particularly the story told in the Bible or the story told in my book, I was I was angry at my wife at the time, and I was numbing out on horror movies uh, because I was really ticked off. I was in the wrong. I was in a really violent movie, and then she got up and left. Right, and then and then what what she did and is she went to her room to our bedroom and started praying for me. And wow. uh, in the middle of this movie, when I'm watching some cockroach, a giant cockroach eviscerate somebody you know, on TV, <laughs> it's one of those great sci-fi movies, right? Those little B movies. The Lord spoke to me about that. And it's like, well, what are you doing? And I, so I told my wife the next morning about it. She said, oh, I was praying for you. I'm like, oh, you know, then I was sort of crushed. And I apologize for being a jerk and everything. But, you know, that's the power of, of a praying spouse. Yeah, you know, and we, to, we we take our I take my wife for, for granted. I don't always pray for her, and I'm like I need to rem- remember I need to pray for my spouse, pray for our marriage, and mm. pray for my kids, and and be intentional. And you know they're called spiritual disciplines because you have to be disciplined. Right? <laughs> Good point. <Yeah. laughs> and I'm not always disciplined. I'm I'm not. It's I have to I have to exercise right it's a it's a problem inherent with guys i think <laughs> in general <laughs> so doug i grew up evangelical pentecostal my whole life i i remember uh, always seeing the i don't know i guess for lack of better words uh spiritual manifestations um slayings people being um slain in the spirits or or uh you know, demons cast it out. Mm-hmm. I've seen the negative side of that to the point where, and this is where I want to ask if you've ever experienced any of this, do you feel like sometimes specifically with Pentecostals or charismatic or evangelical that, um, do they often use that sometimes as a, I don't want to say a crutch, but like always blaming the spiritual, but what like you're saying is you know, sometimes you just have to stop doing it. Just stop doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, it it's not always I got turned off from the phrase sometimes um, just killing demons. We're just, mm-hmm. you know, because I've seen it so much, I think, abused in, in, the, in the wrong kind of way where people don't want to deal with sometimes the practical side. I think the spiritual can be a practical thing, too, in our everyday lives that have you experienced any of that where <laughs> you, you'd have to tell someone or you just. You notice that no, it, it, stop blaming the devil or demons. Just, just stop doing that. Is there any of that? <laughs> yes, there is a ton of that. Okay. Uh, people have over spiritualized the our 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 life, our lives, our our faith. In the Pentecostal movement, I grew up in a Pentecostal movement, and you would see, um, you'd see overt manifestations, and sometimes, look, a manifestation doesn't mean maturity. Mm. Um, in the Old Testament, um, King Saul, who was in rebellion at the time, got completely slain by the Holy Spirit and was prophesying. And people are like, what's going on with, Paul, with Saul? Is he a prophet now? And no, is this just Holy Spirit being sovereign and doing something he wanted to do? He was extremely immature. So mm-hmm. I think what happens in the Pentecostal movement is we see signs and wonders or we see someone clucking like a chicken or something. Like, oh, that person's really holy. That one is that one, that person's really spiritual. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that maybe the God's just doing something. Maybe they're just maybe they're faking it. I mean, I don't know. You know, maybe maybe someone's just saying, I want to buy a Honda really fast uh, over and over again <laughs> and trying to give an impression. But um I it, it does drive me crazy when someone says, Well, I can't stop sinning, I have a demon. Okay. Those two things can be true at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't stop sinning, and you have a demon. So get rid of the demon. I'm not going to cast anything out. Stop sinning. <laughs> let's, 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 let's figure this out. You know, what is what discipline do we need to do? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's for some people. It, so the best deliverance, administering the identity of the person, the true identity. Well, I'm a slave to sin. No, you're not. Okay, do you know who you are, who God made you to be? He, he, you are a new creature. You are God's image on the earth. You are his representative. You're ambassador. You're empowered by the Holy Spirit. You are loved. God's not mad at you. He died for you. You are. He's restored you. You are in, sitting in heavenly places right, right now. And as deliverance becomes super easy because yeah. suddenly 
the per, they get so full of the Holy Spirit. That spirit's like, I don't have a place here. <laughs> you know, and deliverance is easy. If someone's believing a lie about themselves, then deliverance is really a mess. It takes a long time uh, to, to deal with it. And someone can get delivered from a spirit. And what, uh, when I was in youth ministry, um, we had kids who were demonized. And but but our spirits would follow them. Um, some of the kids I, I was a minister to could actually see the spirits. Wow. And um, one of the kids said, well, I ha- yeah, I have a demon woman, um, a teenage girl. She came in. I have a spirit with me. She didn't call it a demon. She said, I have a spirit with me. He, he was hurting me on the way here. Um, he didn't want me to come here. I'm like, well, that I'm thinking that should be a clue that he's, you know, the <laughs> spirit is about you now. No, no, he, he wouldn't come in. He's outside. Said, oh, okay. Um, do you realize he's going to jump on you again as soon as you leave church? Yeah. Yeah. But this is a, this is a place I can rest from that. Well, you know, you, you don't have to have a spirit, you know, you, you can have the Holy spirit. You have Jesus and that thing and, and tell that thing to go. And she said, I know, I know I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm like, okay. So, and you know what will happen a couple weeks later, she's like, I, I, I've given my life to Jesus. And that spirit left. Mm. And, uh, so deliverance is easy when you get saved. Yeah. And, and people, sometimes Christians need to get saved again. You know, they, 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 they've walked in their faith so long that they take everything for granted. They, they forget the freedom they have, Yeah, you know, or, or they walk down the wrong path or they get into habitual sin or they get into a bad relationship or they, you know, their finances crash. So they think it's, they think it's a demon. Sometimes it's just, they need to cut up their credit cards, you know? <laughs> those those you are know demons, I mean? man. We, 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 <laughs> Yeah, I mean, sometimes we, maybe you need to fast. Mm, yeah, <laughs> it's like, what does fasting do? I don't really know, but it works. You know. <laughs> good. Those so are, those I, are good I, I agree. I, I sometimes in in churches, uh, someone will go up for deliverance or something, and they put they're putting on a show, mm-hmm. and it creates fear in the room, or you know, devil's putting on a show, and it's like take that person to another room, right? You, you, I had, so here's an example. When I was in youth ministry, I had two kids who came and they were, they were playing with the Ouija board mm. and they, oh. they released something and they were terrified. And so they came to get free from the thing they released that they released. And, and, uh, they, they, they didn't, they came, they, they demanded to be, uh, go through deliverance right when they got there at the church. And I'm like, no, you're not in charge. The demon's not in charge. Uh, the, the, in our youth group, we did ministry at the end of service. We, we started with a message, and we went into worship, and then we did we we trained the kids how to pray for each other and and to do the, to do the stuff. We it wasn't that I would do the prayer. I we would teach the kids to pray for each other, and and so they could handle it because we're we were training disciples. But anyway, they they really wanted to before the sermon. They would no, oh, we need to get free now. No, you, you don't. Uh, I'm in charge here. You're not in charge. And after the message and after we did worship and then we were praying, I took the kids, those two kids to another room because we weren't going to create a show for these other teenagers to get fearful of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, with, with, one, with the girl, it was a boy and a girl. The, the girl got freed right away, gave her life to Jesus right there. It was quick and easy. The boy was like manifesting and I was getting frustrated. I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting where with them. And so I knew that other kids wanted some one-on-one ministry time. So I went and grabbed another adult in the church who's, who's a seer. He could see very clearly in the spirit realm. It's quite intimidating. He can see your sin. I mean, he can see everything. It's, it's really something. Hmm. His name is Jerry. He has a huge heart of love. And he got Jerry to go in the room. I, I told Jerry, this kid's like shaking. He says he has a demon. I'm not feeling anything. I'm, I'm not having any luck. Would you, could you deal with him? He's like, he, he's, like oh, he's like, oh, yes. You know, oh, yeah. it's like <laughs> Mel Gibson and Braveheart. He's like, all right, here we go. You know, it was, it was awesome. He, it was like, I really wanted a guitar. Car rift, and walked in that room, you know. And he sat in front of this kid who was like shaking stuff. He just sat in front of him, looked at him for a couple of minutes, and said, "There's nothing on you." And the kid said, "To the left when you walked into the room." And he, Jerry, said, "Well, stop shaking then." The kid stopped shaking. <laughs> Sit up. Mm-hmm. Don't you know who you are? No. Let me tell you who you are. Jesus died for you. Yeah, that's how much God loves you. You don't need a give your life to some demon are you kidding me do you know how much do you know how much be the holiness the righteousness of god here you are missing do you know how much power god has has in store for you like real power 
power to change lives. And, you know, the kid's like, oh, and that kid, you know, he didn't get saved that night. But he did eventually, mm. you know. And, I mean, I, that's ministry. That's deliverance. You don't need to. That's deliverance. And there's another time where a kid, I, he was manifesting, and he had a demon on him. And and I, and and then that thing pushed me back. I felt it. It was, uh, it took me, it, you know, I was like getting ready to put hands on him. I tried to set him free or whatever. And that thing shoved me right here. And there was a kid who was there who could see who see was gone, and she went. It went like that. I'm like, I know, I felt it. I went, went back several feet, and uh, and then they took me off. I'm like, oh, that thing's got to go. And then my my teenage said, Doug, some the kid's name's Trey. I said Trey, you ready to give your life to Jesus? He, she, he said no. I said, well, we got we're gonna get rid of this demon. And she said, no, don't. He's not ready. If you cast that demon out, he's not ready. More is gonna come after him. I'm like, oh, you're right. Sure, that's what you taught us. I'm like, I know. That's right. I guess I write in scripture. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Sure. Okay. I got out of I got out of the spirit and I was in my flesh because I was mad that that thing came after me, right? Uh, you're right. I said, Trey, I'm not, I'm gonna let the spirit be on you, bud. Until you're ready to give your life to Jesus, then you'll have absolute freedom. And he said, Okay. And that week I got a text message. I gave my life to Jesus. Spirit's gone. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome, yeah, hallelujah. But you know what happened I, after that is the kid got in a car accident a couple of days later. The demon was ticked, went after him. And I, I, was that a coincidence? I don't think it's a coincidence. We're in a war, and the enemy's mad. When we, we, get, we save someone, we have to we. When God saves someone, whenever we get a partner with what the Lord's doing. And, uh, but you know what, the kid, they, um, he survived the accident, and they're actually my neighbors. They live across the street now. Um, that, that woman and uh, they got married and they have kids. And so it's, again, we, we're in a walk, we're in a war, but it's a, it's a long-term deal. It's, it's a walk and you know, you can deliver someone from a demon, but are you creating a disciple? <laughs> that's our, that's our role. That, um, that's interesting. That, I, that's kind of brings me into slide two, um, conflicting worldviews yeah. because, um, like Gumby was saying, um, that is that a spiritual thing? Is that a physical thing? Is it both things? Do you acknowledge both sides of it? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We it, it, conflicting worldviews. We live in a, in America that we have two great worldviews that are at war, and neither of them are Christian. <laughs> right. <laughs> we have the scientific worldview, the materialism. And we have basically Gnosticism. So scientific worldview says the spirit realm is not real. Everything's physical. If you think you have a demon, you don't. You have a chemical reaction going on, you need to fix. Mm. The Gnosticism is the physical is not real. Yeah. Spirit's all real. Spirit's what's real. And that's where the transgenderism comes from. I mean, the language they even use. I, I, I was, I'm a girl, and I was put into a boy's body. But the truth is I'm a girl. Because I was existing as a girl, and now I'm in the wrong body. Yeah, that's what transgender people say. Right. That's Gnosticism. They're saying the spirit is true, and what the and they're saying that God is evil and put me in the wrong body. That's what they're saying. And so all this transgender is going on in our society. It's religious. It's a worldview. Christianity comes along and says, well, actually the physical is real, and the spiritual is real. Yeah. Right. So, and salvation involves both, and redeeming the earth and and the spirit side. So, we have to think like Christians, not like scientific materialists, not like Gnostics, right. and that's the big struggle. Yeah, mm -hmm. agreed. I was listening to uh, uh, Bishop Robert Barron the other day. Um, it, it, he he often refers to the uh, the new religion of scientism, right? Where mm -hmm. Everything is measurable, and if it's not measurable, it's not real. So. <laughs> mm. Right. Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, I give the example in the book, actually. How do you measure the experience of eating an apple? Right. I mean, how do you measure the experience of love? Yeah. That, that was his uh, yeah. point. That's, that's exactly his point, is that the, that's the American mindset. Is right. If, if I can't quantify it, obviously it's not real. Right. <laughs> right. Mm. Well, we gotta. We, we can't think like that because well, you can't quantify spirits. 
as Christians, we can't blame everything on the spirit. We can't blame everything on physical. It's all interrelated. It's all related. And it's yeah. just, and so that's why the true, the, the armor of God involves truth and faith and salvation. You know, it's, it's, it's finding that, it's finding that balance of spirit and physical and, and, and uh, surrendering it to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Worldview, worldview is huge. Worldview is huge. That's what I want to teach people to think about. And I'm not an expert on worldview, um, but I like studying people who are experts. I agree. Um, and we, we, we travel in a lot, a lot of the same circles, which I think helps a lot. Um, in fact, for those who don't know, uh, I've been so impressed with uh, with Doug's work. Um, he is now the uh, the Protestant side of our uh, of our Facebook group. Oh, nice! So I've made him an admin on our page. Sweet. Um, and it's it's actually because you're you're, you're so genuine, and you you don't stop at you don't stop at uh, how how'd you put it. I would like to buy a Honda. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Which so you you're actually you're actually very studious. Um you you put time into what you believe. And I've been very impressed with that. Um you know, so many so many um of the Protestant side, especially on the evangelical side, just simply stop at trying to experience anything that they don't put time into knowing what they want to understand. So I've been so impressed with your work that that's really why I wanted you in there because, um, as everyone knows, I come m- much more from the the Catholic and Orthodox side of things, and I really wanted somebody to to be able to speak up in a positive light for the Protestant side and especially for the Evangelical side because there are some really good voices uh, like yours out there. Well, I I'm a my grandparents on my dad's side were Catholic, are Catholic. My grandma's still living. And my mom, my mom's side were Pentecostal. And so when dad, the Catholic, and mom, the oneness Pentecostal, I'm not oneness Pentecostal anymore, but when they wanted to date, grandma and grandpa and grandma and grandpa were like, no. Are you kidding me? You need to marry a Catholic. You need to marry a Pentecostal. And, but then they were <laughs> sneaking off together, right? And uh, so I... Eventually, Spirit. they just kind of, my grandparents just said, "Oh well, I guess what are we gonna do?" So they 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 um, this is crazy. This is back. So dad went to Vietnam and um, and uh, and he was on leave in Hawaii. And so then mom, my my grandparent mom's side, flew mom down, and they got married in Hawaii when he was on leave. Oh wow! And then he went back to the war, and then she came back home. You know, I'm like, oh, can you imagine 19, they're 19. And I think, well, you're crazy. Wow. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, but, <clears throat> but I, so I grew up with, with a sort of a very strict legalistic Pentecostal church, but we were the, considered the liberal wing, <laughs> <laughs> the, the grace part of that. And then, and then seeing the, the Catholics and my, I learned reverence from the Catholic side of the family. Mm. I learned reverence for the father from the Catholic side. And I learned, um, I learned a lot about the Holy spirit and Jesus from, you know, the Pentecostal side. And, and so it is, look, I don't have the faith figured out. <laughs> I, I mean, where am I? Do I have God 60% figured out? <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, and I, 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 I talk about having a growth mindset. We need to be humble and realize we haven't, we're not where Jesus is. Right. Someday we're going to see him and we're going to be transformed to be like him. But the, the act of seeing the Lord, I mean, that's how you can interpret one of the passages in John. An act of seeing the Lord will transform us like him. That'd be so revelatory, you know, and who knows when that'll be. But look, we can learn. Christians, evangelicals need to realize that Catholicism has been working on this for a couple, you know, 1500 years. Right. <laughs> and they, they figure some stuff out and yeah. Russian Orthodox, the Orthodox church has been working on stuff. Yep. Yeah. And you know, and I, 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 I really, in part, I go to a church as part of the assemblies of God, but I'm more of a, a vineyard person. Vineyard's been working on this for 30 years. Right. I mean, so right. <laughs> we, we, it's like, we can learn. 
you know, we can learn from each other because yeah. God is working with lots of people around the world. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And we, we just cannot act like, uh, John Calvin figured it all out, and that's where we need to land, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Or you know, or John Wimber figured it out, or or the Pope has figured it. We we can't. We have to be humble, man, and and know that we're not. Fall- Paul says in First Corinthians that whenever you're chasing after a teacher, you're being human. You're being yeah. merely human. We need to ch- chase after the Lord because we're not merely human anymore. We're, we're supernatural. Yeah. Well, and so, uh, you know, I like Dr. Heiser. You had him on, and I, I, I'm a huge influence on in my life. Huge influence. He's like my Yoda, right? <laughs> Agreed. Um, Agreed. But, but I don't want to be merely human mm. because, you know, he's, he's not, so he's an influence. N.T. Wright, huge influence. Sure. But who are we chasing Agreed. after? We're chasing after the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Then Someone N.T. said, uh, right. <laughs> and uh, yeah. An analogy is, is uh, we want to be a centered set people. So in the center is Jesus. And i rather be far from him walking towards the Lord rather than close to him and walking away. Yeah. Mm. You know, we need to be walking towards the Lord wherever we're at. And, and that means having a heart of position of love and grace and just extending forgiveness. And on Facebook, letting the other person have the last word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that, is that possible? It is because I tried. I, I live it out, All and right. I think, why am I getting angry if to someone who thinks they have it figured out? <laughs> it's funny yeah. you mentioned N.T. Wright because uh, I was I was watching one of his uh, speeches. I, it was probably like his speech at Google. Oh, that was a great one. Yeah. That was a great one. I think it was that one, or it was one of the the Jesus uh, series he was doing. But he said one of his biggest Christ critiques with the Western church um, was the fact that Christ, uh, the centrality of Christ is not central anymore. <laughs> Isn't that true? And, it, you know, that just kind of uh, confirms what you're saying there. Uh, Doug, I think that's very much true, and it's, it's, it's been a problem in, you know, trying to figure out w- when did that start happening? When, when, when was the centrality of Christ kind of removed from the Western church here in America? And not just America, but we call it, right. you know, the West. Is it when they, people start ar- arguing over the, the colors of the paint for the sanctuary? or <laughs> well, yeah. padded, padded pews or, 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 or chairs? I mean, you know, there's been church splits over this stuff. There have Are been. you kidding me? He, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he tends to look more toward the, you know, dispensationalist movement. And I would, I would agree that from, from that time on, you know, it, things have kind of gotten on shaky ground, you know? Well, yeah, because, yes, because when the goal became, this world is not my home. Mm-hmm. Right. Then I don't have to care for this world. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just a passing through now. You're coming back. Right. And that, that figuring that out, and I'm a, you know, I, I used to be so arrogant. I'm like, oh, you mean the Catholics have that something right? You know, it's, <laughs> that was years ago. And I'm thinking, oh, my word, I, I've, been, I've been taught wrong. Mm. But the goal is the rapture. Yeah. The goal is not the rapture. Amen. <laughs> It's not. It, yeah. The goal is Jesus. Right. Yeah. And, 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 you know, reaching our neighbors mm-hmm. here, near, and far. I mean, mm-hmm. our actual neighbors. I, I read this book called uh, The Art of Neighboring. Mm. <laughs> our old church went through it as a sermon series. And uh, they asked, what if Jesus meant it when he said, love your neighbors? Like, what if he meant your neighbors? <laughs> <laughs> You know, we, we want to say, okay, oh, our enemies and stuff. No, like, like, do you even know your neighbor's names? I'm thinking, oh, I read that in my book. I'm like, had a bloody nose reading that page, right? I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know my neighbor's names. It, it's, it's kind of funny you say that because that's <laughs> literally the way I've got, I've become acquainted with my neighbors, believe it or not, through sitting down and just enjoying a beer or enjoying a rum and coke. Right. And, it, 
and just enjoying them for who they are. Mm-hmm. And instead of just shoving down, you know, I know so many Christians who are like, well, did you <laughs> shove the gospel down their throat? No, that's not how you win them, right? <laughs> so That's right, right. Because yeah. so, yeah. so many people, people don't realize you don't minister through people by shoving the gospel down people's throats. You minister to them through relationships. You know, you mm-hmm. get you get to know them for where they're at, and because they can only really understand something from the viewpoint that they understand. So you can't say you can't take all the biblical verbiage and terminology and say, "Hey, how come you don't know this? How come you don't understand this?" Well, you're just inferior. It it doesn't it doesn't work. <laughs> have, have you been washed in the blood, brother? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how about like you said getting to know your neighbor and then when your neighbor you build that relationship and then eventually meaningful conversations can come up yeah or uh, do you know if your neighbor is going through a, a crisis yeah and you can like you can now now so that again we, we're so eager to be right yeah yeah and it's like you know I mean, a great example is like when people want to minister to Muslims, they want to say, well, you know, Allah, that's not really God. That's, that's, you know, that's the moon God. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? How is that helpful? Like, exactly. Because it, something isn't like, like this would be helpful. Right. Let's build a relationship. Yeah. Let's start there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, it's like, just because, you know, I mean, it, this, that's the way to, reach somebody is not to insult them yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> we're not trying to be evil you know it's and our, our neighbors who maybe who don't know the lord it's just it's just like getting to know them have a cookout right invite them over it, they'll, they'll figure out you're a christian you know <laughs> absolutely mm-hmm. it, it's amazing how many people don't even realize that muslims do believe that jesus was a sanctified prophet right and they actually do believe that Mary was a virgin that gave birth to Christ. They do believe those things. And so mm-hmm. that's a great starting point right there. Yeah. When they, and when they kind of figure out what yeah. that means, I mean, the, Christianity is, is, is advancing um, throughout that. Muslim, that's why there's so much, so much violence going on against Christians right now in, in the Middle East, is because these, the gospel is making advances and the enemy hates it. You know. Yeah. But we don't have to worry about you know, let's talk about the Muslim who lives in your town. Yeah. You know, like if you go to Walmart and you see someone who's obviously maybe from the Middle East, do you think maybe they feel a little intimidated? Right. No, that's that's a great point. My daughter you know, goes, maybe going up to him and go ahead. Oh no, uh, I was just gonna say my daughter goes to a Lutheran Christian school. I think the only Muslim that they have in her school was a girl from Palestine. She's Palestinian. Yeah, and she's very proud of her heritage, but she wanted she wanted a great education. They heard about the Lutheran mm-hmm. school, so they sent her there. She, you know, a lot of their core values line up. Yeah, but a lot of the persecution and judgment she gets are from Christians. Yeah, the very people that she heard would accept them is the very place where she finds judgment. And so my daughter asked me, you know, you know, what should I do? How should I approach it? I said, you just love her. You talk to her. You be a friend. Exactly. It's all Christ. That's what he would want you to do. That's what he would do. Yeah. You know, and get past the, the social stigmas or what the media says, who should be our, our enemy and who shouldn't, you know? Yeah. I, I think Christ yeah, is pretty we, clear on that. We shouldn't get our theology from the media. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Right. Exactly. Agreed. <laughs> I mean, I, I, when I think of... The pagans who approached Jesus, like the kid, the guy with the legion, the legion of, of spirits in them, right? Mm. That that was in the, the that was in the the Decapolis. That wasn't in Israel. That wasn't in God's territory. That was in a pagan land. He he didn't say. It, it said he was talking with them. It, 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 the Lord didn't go after his theology. He he was just he loved them, right? Yeah. And, or the woman when Jesus was on vacation in Sidon, he was on vacation, and some woman like invaded his private space and said, <laughs> "I've heard of you, and my kid has a demon. Will you deliver me?" And she, he's like, "You're not even a Jew. Why, why am I talking to you?" And she, I, 
I said, I don't know. I just know you need to save my daughter. Okay. You know, it's like, let's not, I, I, I just, God's love is so great. Yeah. Let's demonstrate that before we call out people's sin. The Holy Spirit will tell them about their sin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the God, God will, will, and, you know, because we, we don't need to be so judgmental. We can get people in, in the Bible, and, and God, like, I remember years ago when my daughter was mouthing off, and uh, we didn't know what to do. Uh, <laughs> we're just, like, having, you know, the, the sassy phase, and someone at church said, have her, uh, have her copy down the Sermon on the Mount. That's beautiful. I'm like, oh, that? that's a good punishment. Right. And so she's like, Oh, you know, it took her forever. But then she's like, I didn't know the Bible said you had to respect your parents. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, we're, we're bad parents for not uh, telling you that the Bible says respect your parents, you know, <laughs> but you yeah. know, but, but when they see it, it hurt, it went to her heart. Right. Yeah. So anyway, it's the word, the word will do it. It's true. Need to be... Yeah. I was, I was going to say, it's true. It's uh. I know I know a martial arts instructor, and he's a professed Christian, all right? But at the same time, I walked into his office the one time, and he had the, the Israel hat on his, uh, on his door, right? Mm-hmm. And I walked mm-hmm. in, and I was like, I'm, I look at it, and I'm like, uh, okay, that's a little weird, but okay, because he's not Jewish, all right? So... <laughs> mm-hmm. So I walk in and I start talking to him. I was like, hey, you like the hat? I was like, um, okay, why? And he's like, oh, oh, I put I bought it because uh we had a certain Muslim student who who was going to the stool. And he's like, Oh, I bought that because he keeps wearing his Palestinian hat. And so I wanted to to counter that with, you know, the Jewish hat. And I was like, Why would you do that? And he's like yeah. he's like, Well, because he keeps wearing the Palestinian hat. And I was like, he's from Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why would you? And mind you, he probably didn't even know that because he didn't take his mm-hmm. time to actually befriend him, right? Mm-hmm. Um, um, I knew that because I made friends with him. And he and I had long conversations on theology and history. And we, we, we to this day, we have a beautiful relationship. And uh, I, I told him, I was like, it, listen, if Italians can wear Italian hats, and the Irish can wear Irish hats. Why can a Palestinian wear a Palestinian hat? It just, it, I mean, it, you can't bash a guy over his country of origin just to assume that he's there to disrupt your Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's let's just say though that the, the kid was being, uh, he was trying to be rude. You say he was trying to be in your face. So what? <laughs> Extend him grace. Right. I mean, we were God's enemies. We were <laughs> so offensive to the Lord. Hmm. And he, you know, God didn't like lay the smack down. He, he just extended us a grace. Maybe we should do that to our enemies. But I mean, this kid's not even an enemy. Maybe we should do that instead of trying to be offended all the time. You know, I mean, Christians, of all the people who should be offended, none of them should be Christians. Right. Because we, yeah. we died. It's true. How do you offend a dead person? <laughs> yeah. Did we not die? And we not ri- risen with Christ? Yeah. So why are we getting offended? Yeah. You know, that doesn't mean we don't have righteous anger about things like abortion or whatever, but it's, that's di- that's different. But people are so quick to be offended. Yeah. <laughs> and we we just so we true. really need. But you know, we're talking about being being neighbors. Like if if you, here's what's amazing. People will talk about their spirituality. They'll talk about the weird spiritual stuff happening in their house. And I wrote the book, Peace in Your House, because I wanted to give Christians like Emmanuel, like, so when your neighbor comes to you and says, man, I, I have some weird stuff going on in my house. I, it's weird. This lights turn off in this one room. Mysteriously, we had an electrician come and check it out. And that's <laughs> weird. And I mean, I don't know what's going on. Well, maybe you have a demon there. Well, I don't know. I, I thought so. I don't uh, see they're thinking it. Like, right. well, why are you why are you afraid? Let's go let's go clean it out. I don't want to get I, I called the Catholic Church and they won't come. Which by the way, we hear that a lot. The people will call the local Catholic Church because there's stuff going on in the house, and the church is like, Yeah, we, we don't do that. You know, and <laughs> it's like, why do you call the Catholic Church? I'm a Christian. I right. have God's authority. 
God, let's just go. Let's just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we are the Ghostbusters. Hello, you know, it's it's we have the the power and authority because God's given Jesus gave it to us, and so we need to walk in it in love and go in. And I tell you what, you cleanse that house. That's the time to minister the gospel. Yeah, we were at a house. We did a house cleansing once, um, and they were Christians. Um, and there was weird stuff going on in the house. And at one point, we were going from room to room. And at one point, um, we were in like the stairway, and we realized there's like a dark current or something going on in this stairway. It was weird. It was dark. I had a picture in my head of like this red current or something. And and my wife said, um, "This is going to sound weird, but." we're going to open the front door and command the demons in the house to get out. And, um, I, okay. Uh, you know, that's weird, but go ahead. We open the front door. I mean, we're doing a house cleansing. That's weird. So what's the big deal? You know, she <laughs> opened the front door and said, in the name of Jesus, dark spirits in this house, you must leave something like that. There was a rushing wind that went through that hallway. The, the homeowner killed over with pain in her, in her abdomen. And it just, and it was, if I hadn't been there, I, I, it was the most dramatic spiritual thing in that sort of that I had ever seen. And it just, and it, it, they left. I mean, mm. they left. We all felt it. One of the women on our team was started praying in tongues right away. Cause that's always a good thing to do. If you get freaked out by demons, like that. whatever it was, I mean, it was, it left. And we closed the door and then, and then the house was, was, was clean. And we just took authority over. We declared it was God's kingdom and we ministered to the family to make sure that whatever they were doing that brought the thing in uh, stopped. But <clears throat> you have an experience like that with non-believers, they're going to become believers. Oh yeah. 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 You oh, know, yeah. and that, that's what happened in the, that's how the gospel happened. And, and that's how it advanced in acts. They, they did signs and wonders. And there was a letter in the first century written by a Christian to some Roman official. And the, and the letters was complaining to the Roman official, and it said, we heal your sick, we cast out your demons, and you still persecute us. What the heck? You know, so the Christians had a reputation of the going in and having this power, and not everybody got converted when they did that. But the, the fact that, that I get kind of get a kick out of it, that someone wrote a letter to the, to the governor saying, come on, we're— you have slaves in your household who are Christians and they're keeping the demons out. Why are you like being mean to them? You should be nice. In fact, you should convert. <laughs> but that's how, kind of how the gospel advanced because people saw that power and they, and the freedom. Well, you know what? We live in a really pagan society right now. Instead of acting like we're on the retreat, let's, let's start taking this authority God's given us and go to our neighbor's house and clean it out one house at a time. Right. Right. Anyway, but that happens through relationship. It, it, people will share these experiences, or you can. They're easy to start conversations about it. You know, have you seen that show on TV where they go in and they have psychics go in? They, they or the ghost hunter <laughs> show. What do you think about that? Oh, it happens in my house. Really? I mean, it's amazing how many people are having weird stuff. Now, sometimes it's not a demon or a spirit. It's just the AC needs to be repaired, right? <laughs> you know, but but people have natural mindset and you know, there's nothing going on in this house that's spiritual you just have a spirit of fear well, let's get rid of that and i don't mean a demon they just have a mindset of fear yeah. right and that's it we that's what i mean we don't always you know sometimes people are just really unhealthy i have a demon i'm sick all the time well maybe you should stop eating fast food you know <laughs> so it's so we have to figure out where it's at right yeah right and that's ministry that's ministry because yeah. god wants us to be healthy all healthy you know christians shouldn't be gluttons did you know that i agree I mean, we do i mean we, we should be healthy yeah i agree join us for the rest of the conversation in part two